Good morning. So I want to talk about food today. It's Thursday. And on Thursdays, I usually get my Misfit Market uh, shipment each week. And last week, I got one of these. And it's called a jicama. I actually had to look it up and pronounce it. I have no idea what it was. Um, and it turns out that it's considered a Mexican potato, Mexican turnip. And then you got this. And yesterday, I was standing in the store with my daughter and I said, oh, I want to get beets. And I've been eating beets because it's been coming in my Misfit Market and I really never ate beets before that, but I know that it's like so nutritious for you. And there we were standing there at the organic area of the store and these beets were like, they were just wet. They were like earthy looking. They looked like they just plucked out of the earth. And my daughter goes, ew. You know, and I was like, wow. And I thought back of somebody who contacted me and said, you know, I break my fast with beet, beet powder juice, right? So, so in my head, I'm thinking, looking at the beet, like, huh, isn't that interesting? You know, my daughter or somebody may look at it and go, ew. But if you put it into a powder form, and you undo it and you scoop it out and you put it in there and it's all that, then somehow that's better and it's not. Um, so I bring these out. One, I don't typically have this in the house, but we had a party. You can see it's still not even actually open, which I'm a bit surprised with my two kids. But, um, you know, it's one of those things where I was reading this morning about plant based eating. And it hit me because one of the things I usually say when I'm explaining my travel for intermittent fasting was I go back to being like hunters and gatherers, right? Because if you go back to that time where it's simple, right? Not like this, something that comes from the earth, right? For intermittent fasting, we didn't always have a great crop. We had to live off the fat on our body. So we went into ketosis very often and we leaned up as beings. We don't give our, our bodies a chance to do that. We eat one meal on top of another meal on top of another meal. And all of a sudden we can't understand why we can't lose weight because we aren't letting the fat on our body like when we were simply hunters and gatherers. So as I'm reading this this morning, it brings back to the whole idea of plant-based. Plant and I was like, Damn, that makes sense. It's as simple as that again. And I mean, not that I didn't think it, but like, yeah, just as like not every crop was easy to, to, to make, you know, wintertime came, things were lean, but also you couldn't always kill the animal. There wasn't always meat there. So it became something that was a rarity. And if you look at our, the way we eat, you got the bacon in the breath in the morning, you got the chicken at the at lunchtime, you got the beef at the dinner time, you never take a break, ever, ever. So, you know, to me, that was pretty interesting. And as I'm reading about why people go plant-based or where plant-based came from, the idea of actually later on, right, so hunters and gatherers, and then all of a sudden, food became free if you grew it, right? Like, and they mentioned Little House in the Prairie, and for me, I grew up watching Little House in the Prairie, so I do remember seeing the fields of, of, you know, them always gardening and doing stuff and all that. And then you remember them bringing, you know, the bags of, of whatever they have to trade with whatever. And, you know, they say like beans or veggies usually were, were traded up, right, for meat. So beans and, and all that became second, right? But why? Really? I mean, that's the simplest, easiest, cheapest way of living, in my opinion. And then fast forward a little bit more. And, you know, um, this article goes on to about the 1980s and 90s. And to me, I have seen so many documentaries around that time or how our food got from this to this. I mean, this is an organic Mexican potato. This is a potato that's 
made from a, a, a lab because it's genetically modified, the seed. And then it's got like five different kind of oils, all genetically modified. Anyway, so 1980s, 90s came, everything became fat free, right? Even now, fast forward a little bit, it was everything was gluten free, right? Something free. Um, and look what they did to our food. And now here we are with magazines like this, right? And we're all kind of scratching our head going, huh. And then we say we don't know how to cook, right? Or we don't know, you know, what to do with these things. You gotta buy one first, you know? Um, one of the things that I say I definitely have done through the years is in, in the last few years when I started going on this journey on, on just better food and and what's going on in our food industry. I mean, so I used to bring home like strange fruit and veggies, you know, all of a sudden I'd go and something would catch my eye and I'd be like, dragon fruit? And I mean, I didn't have to buy a lot, but I would buy one, chop it up, everybody would try it. And, you know, I mean, of course the veggies, they didn't want to try so much, but you know, they did. They tried it sometimes, and they do know that mom has strange things in her house. And they like it. They try it. So, um, to me, I think that that's, you know, why in many ways plant-based became, in the last year for me, such an easy fit. Because I soar through the years about all the other food. And for some reason, I was like, I don't want to see about meat. And then one more documentary, one more like, wait a minute, and I put the pieces together. Now I'm not saying that everybody's got to drop their their burgers and 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 you know head to the to the you know the corn, but and not GMO corn. Um, but if you're aware of it, why have meat every meal? Why do that to you? I mean, in the 1980s and 90s, if you look back on cancer rates. When did it start to multiply? When did our bodies and, and when did obesity start to even become such a big thing? When food became this. So what we gotta do really is as simple as this, go back to the basics. Go back to the way we used to eat as people. It doesn't come in a shake, in a powder or a pill. It doesn't come that way. It comes in food. And food is medicine, truly. I mean, there's actually like research on people going plant-based and curing themselves of cancer and disease. So how could food not be medicine if that's the case? Whereas we take medicine to just mask what's going on in our body. Does it really fix it all the time? So they'd rather in many ways keep this up instead of this. And that's why I'm here saying, try something like this. You know, I mean, I'm gonna make a really cool salad out of this. Um, and I'll share it. And um, I'm looking forward to it. So I will say, I, that's what it's about, I, in my opinion. Because this is not food. Strangely, this is. So have a great day. And maybe I'll be on later with the Misfit Box Sometimes it comes on Thursdays, sometimes it's Friday. I think it's like COVID land world is just, they were so consistent up to COVID and then it just slowed down, things happen. And I, I have to say the quality's back because it was like a week or two, I was like, eh. But um, I like it because I do get things like this. It makes me have to look up another simple plant-based recipe to try. And then make it mine, you know, because some of it's just eh, and then you got to kind of do your own creative thing. So I hope you have a great day and I'll chat with you tomorrow. Bye.